All right, guys, welcome back to the Moving Underground. So today we got a cool video for you. We're gonna look at some Achilles stuff. I got my good friend Antoine Mason here as a pro basketball player. Um, so we're gonna work with him today on soft tissue work and some mobility work. Uh, but Antoine, do you wanna tell us like kind of how the injury happened, what, when it was, some of the details surrounding like uh, what led up to it? Uh, it's probably been for a couple of months, just tightness and nagging right. in the morning. Like um, in that calf, like you're yeah. just feeling like constant tightness. Yeah, yeah. just trying to walk on it. Um, and then I got a little lacrosse ball to roll it out, keep right. trying to roll it out. But I knew I needed some active treatment. And, right. Uh, somebody that knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Because um, it start, I, I could tell like in my game, things start decreasing, like my athleticism. Like this was before the injury happened, you started noticing that? Yeah, right. Uh, so performance was, stuff first. Yeah, yeah, performance. Like I wasn't jumping as high. Uh, I had to mentally like try to get myself going. So right. I, I knew I was like, nah, I'm not I'm not getting old. So I, I, right. had to just, <laughs> I had to like figure out how to, you know, release uh, the tension. Right. The calf. Just just playing ball. And right. I just stopped feeling like certain injuries right here. Right. Like, Try to ice it, heat it, right? Do different With things. the basic yeah, stuff. Basic. So we're gonna work on this Achilles tendonitis and hopefully get him feeling a lot better. Uh, we've already done a few treatments and so far it's been pretty good, right? Yeah, so getting on that. Definitely, I would see the difference. Right. There, those right. Treatments so we're just addressing some, you know, obviously some foot and ankle mobility, but also, you know, his hip mobility. Again, understanding that everything is connected. So. Stay tuned, I hope you guys like this and it should be a really uh, a cool video. A little assessment here, just to kind of look at his active ankle dorsiflexion, right? So Anton, go ahead and pull those up towards you as far as you can. You can see pretty clearly that he's got a bit more dorsiflexion on this right side than he does on this left side. This is the side that's affected, right? So clearly we can see a difference in mobility here. Um, you know, and if I give him some passive help, we can see that we can get them kind of even here, right? The other thing we wanna work on is looking at this great toe extension. You'll also see from an equal ankle position how I have more pliability in this great toe extension on his right than his left. And we, we're understanding that all of this tissue is connected, that it's not just the Achilles ending at the calcaneus, it blends in into the periosteum of the calcaneus into the plantar fascia. Um, so we do have to address some foot stuff as well. Go ahead and flip over for me. So we flip them over here, we can kind of take a look at the backside. And one of the things you'll notice, Anton, scooch down to me a tiny bit. Good, just like that's fine. You'll notice that this left Achilles looks quite a bit thicker than this right Achilles does. And thickening of this tendon is a precursor, or it's basically what your body does in response to increased stress, right? So he's feeling a lot of that tension through his calf. He's been digging with a, with a lacrosse ball and things like that. Flip back over one more time. What we're gonna do now is like kind of look at an active straight leg raise, okay? As high as you can. Right. Yeah, just go as far as you can, nice and slow. Okay, so we can see clearly that his right side looks really good. Oh, you got a little cramp on that yeah. side? Okay, a little closing angle stuff. All right, and let's see the left side, same thing. All right. so again, mobility-wise, we're looking at his active mobility and hip flexion. Bring this back down. And it looks pretty good on both sides. So we're gonna really focus around this calf, Achilles, and his foot. Um, we're also gonna work on his hip mobility today. today. So one of the other things I like to assess in terms of his you know, ability for ankle dorsiflexion is also gonna go with hip extension. So in order to have good hip extension, we have to have nice ability for internal rotation of the hip, right? So you can see here, he's a little bit more limited in internal rotation, right? Also here on that left side, although that looks like it's getting better, man. That is way better. When we first met, Antoine, it was like you couldn't even break him past that 90 degrees, right? So we're seeing already a, quite a bit of an improvement here. So we're going to stick to the same script that we've been working on um, for the last couple of sessions, okay? So one of the other things I like to assess, you know, in terms of quality hip extension is just how much active hip extension you can get. So what I want you to do, Antoine, is just kind of lay in your stomach so your hip bones are on the edge of the table and your rib cage is on the table, All right? So you're just going to kind of bend over the side there. Right? So everything's gonna stay pressed in here nice. Straighten this leg out for me. Right? And you can keep your weight on this one. Just raise this right leg up as high as you can actively. Right? What you guys will notice is that he gets a ton of lower back tone, right? He's getting a lot of hamstring activation. Obviously, you know, glutes involved too, but he's gonna go into a lot of anterior tilt and lumbar extension. Go ahead and switch to the other side. So you're gonna see how how that lower back extends while he's going into that hip extension. So let's come on back down nice and slow. I'm gonna do this right side one more time and you're, um, you just stop when I tell you to stop, right? So 
right about there is his actual active hip extension. Anything beyond that, keep going Antoine, you'll start to see how he really pulls through the extension in his lower back. So we're gonna work on opening up some of his hip flexors uh, and also wanna try to dissociate this lumbar extension from his hip extension so that we're addressing the underlying cause of that Achilles issue, not just treating the Achilles and not getting anywhere with it, okay? So without further ado, let's uh, hop face down right here and we're gonna get this going. So we're gonna glove up here, just like we normally do. Um, so for Achilles stuff, obviously I'm gonna start working on his calf, um, his, his gastroxoleus complex. We're gonna do some post-tib work here as well. Um, one of the things I really like to do setup wise is just keep that ankle bolstered so I'm not slamming his knee into extension. So we'll lay that ankle on some kind of bolster. Again, we're gonna use the dual purpose massage cream because I like to get a, a little bit of drag on the tissue as I'm, you know, again, we're not just treating the muscle itself. Really what we're trying to treat here is this skin's ability to slide this fascial system. His deep fascia is gonna make up the paratendon of this Achilles complex. And so we, that can be an indicator of some tension through that chain well before you start to actually see thickening of this tendon, um, which I showed you guys already. You just let me know if I hit any like real tender spots, okay? Okay. Right, so we're just gonna start just by kind of warming this tissue up. Um, just some general like sports massage or effleurage type strokes. And again, I'm assessing his tissue quality as I do this, right? So I can really feel like this lateral gastroc head is super dense and toned up compared to the, the medial side. You know, he's definitely got some lateral column or this fibular, this fibularis complex is also pretty juicy. And by juicy, we mean kind of like switched on, right? That neurological system is toning these tissues up. You know, so I'm just using some mechanical pressure as a way to tone that tissue down. Antoine, when you were getting your pain, was it more like in the middle of the tendon? Was it more on the heel? Like on the bone itself or more like towards this middle spot? Yeah, towards the middle. Towards the middle, right? So that's another important thing to note is if you're getting insertional pain, you really don't want to stretch that. That's going to get pissed off more if you stretch it out. But if you're getting this mid-belly 
like muscle tendon unit pain, this is something that you can spend some time stretching. Although I would say that being active at that end range is probably more important than just hanging out passively stretching the whole time, right? And what I mean by being active is, you know, actually, if you're getting into this end range dorsiflexion, actually getting this calf and or this really this gastroc soleus complex to switch on, right, isometrically, creating context around that end range of motion, as well as it, that'll help really reset some of those length tension relationships that can be the cause for some of this issue to begin with. Right, so you can already see like, just after working this tissue a little bit, how the skin slides over the muscle a lot easier. And that's a really good uh, indication of mobility or fascial mobility, is this ability for the skin to slide up and down. All right, so the next step here, probably gonna work on some post-tib work with him. All right, so for here, we'll bring him up into this 90 flex. And I kind of like to use like a pincer grip. Um, really just kind of finding that tibia and just letting my fingers slide in and sink in behind there. All right, so that's kind of hitting that post-tib. You'll also notice that I'm extending his great toe while I'm at it. Again, these great, the flexor halicus, and the flexor digitorum, they both live up in here in this middle third of the tibia, right? So if I'm gonna load or lengthen that tissue while I'm pinning it, you wanna be able to grab that big toe, bring it into extension while you're bringing this into dorsiflexion, okay? So this will help open up, again, some of the ability for extensibility of that great toe. All you know, unfortunately for basketball players in general, um, footwear, quality footwear, although it might seem like it's easy to find, basketball shoes in general are really not the best thing for a human foot. Super thick soles, generally they have a really high heel lift, so what you see is guys will slowly adapt over time because they're in a plantar flex position, they start to lose this ability for dorsiflexion and great toe extension. A lot of that is set up by their footwear. So even though basketball shoes, again, are meant to kind of deaden some of that impact, of all that jumping, uh, it does also kind of come with like some extra baggage in, in terms of like some of the negative adaptations that we might see, like this tightness through this posterior chain, especially if the footwear that these guys are wearing outside of basketball is also basketball shoes or, or shoes with a heel lift. So I usually recommend, you know, transitioning to some type of barefoot or, or more of a lower heel so there's not as much of a heel rise. Uh, for my basketball guys, especially in the off season, um, they will complain that it bothers them or their calves feel real tight in the beginning in that break-in period. But I do think that that's a better long-term strategy for a basketball player to acquire this tissue length back by spending more time with their heel closer to the ground. All right, so once I've cut, so now I've worked through like this fibularis complex, we've hit his gastroc with this pin and stretch stuff and I've, and I've worked through his great toe flexors and his post tip. This is usually where I will bust out the tool. I'm using a rock blade um, mallet here. And I'm gonna start to work the instrument, which is a little bit more of a diffuse modality, like through this whole calf area. Because I'm gonna go deeper, I'm gonna use the more the duller edge, and I'm gonna keep his uh, ankle plantar flexor in an unloaded position so I can access some depth here, okay? And I'm gonna work pretty slow, really spending a lot of time over this tendon unit. I want to stimulate some fibroblastic activity, uh, which means I'm going to keep my dose in to underneath three or four minutes of, of total treatment time of the tool.
position here as I get down to the Achilles itself. I'm gonna lighten up my pressure. And I'm gonna do more of like a feathering type of stroke, okay? The, the goal here, again, this is the thinner skin area. Um, so again, I'm just really trying to stimulate, you know, some capillary flow in the skin, desensitize this or really just improve his pain tolerance through this area by using a mechanical stimulus. Kind of raising that pain pressure threshold. We're seeing some preliminary research that this lighter type of stroke can raise pain pressure thresholds, which in theory hopefully can raise kind of general discomfort thresholds as well. Um, again, we also are potentially stimulating some fibroblastic activity, so hopefully those uh, fibroblasts will begin to spit out some more collagen uh, and collagen that's in this direction um, that's, that's available to absorb or mitigate some of this force. So again, I'm not, a, you know, don't be bashful about getting right up on the bone. Obviously, I'm not pushing really hard. So right now, I'm probably, you know, in terms of like how much pressure, you know, we're in that maybe, you know, two to four range of pressure. Again, and I'll do this through through various levels of tension through that Achilles complex. And I'm also using that sharper or more fine edge. Antoine, I'm not killing you, bro? No, it's good. That feels good, right? Awesome. Okay, so that's good for the calf. Antoine, do me a favor, flip over. I'm gonna work on your foot now. Raise you up a little bit so you're comfortable. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Sweet. So you've been doing the exercises and stuff. Yeah. Uh, any any issues with any of those things? No. So we'll show you guys some of the exercise progressions. I'll Anthony uh, take him through some of what we meant by end range activity. So I got him laying supine. I'm really going to work now. I'm going to kind of switch gears and work this plantar aspect of his foot. Um, Again, I'm, I'm gonna work on a few things. You know, we can already see he starts to get a little bit of a, a bunion deformity if you kind of look through this first person. And that, again, that could be an indication that he's not able to extend well through that great toe. And so as a result, he'll start to articulate over this medial side a little bit more. So I wanna see if we can improve that great toe extension. And again, now we're gonna get a little bit more focused into the plantar surface of his foot. So again, we're looking at dense connective tissues down here. We're not gonna be breaking these up manually. What we're trying to go for is tissue glide. If I can get these tissues to slide and glide on each other a little bit more efficiently, he should see an improvement of his range and that less of a feeling of that tightness. So this is where you can get a ball, you know, really roll and spend some time on the bottom of your foot, like especially that you can feel this density here. Right, so I can feel like almost like a thickening of his plantar fascia as well. Even though this isn't symptomatic, understand that the stress that creates that thickening of the tendon also creates a thickening of that plantar fascia. So, you know, if you're somebody who has plantar fascia or plantar fasciitis, like pain in your heel, the same kind of evaluation would apply. Check that dorsiflexion, check that great toe extension, and if you're missing some, get some and see how that feels. You know, you could do everything to this Achilles that you want. You can ice it, ultrasound it, stim it, shoot it up with drugs, all that kind of stuff. Not going to make a difference unless you address the underlying cause. Yeah, you might be able to change your symptom in the short term, but if you want to prevent these Achilles injuries from happening, addressing the movement issue, which in his case is this ankle mobility, is not only improving his health, it's improving his performance. How's that feel? Pretty gnarly up under there? So now we can start working up. So I'm gonna to start to do just some great toe mobilizations, right? So now we've addressed soft tissue at the calf. We've worked some pin and stretch through kind of the bottom of his foot. So now what I'm gonna do is actually mobilize this, this great toe. And I just use a towel. First thing I'm gonna do is create a little bit of distraction. Uh, and I'm so I can just show you guys, I'm gonna create a little bit of distraction. And then I'm just gonna take that that first metatarsal and just kind of mobilize that head in an anterior posterior direction. So again, I'm creating traction and I'm just kind of using this bigger bone as a way to mobilize. You certainly could do it like this as well where you try to grip, grab this uh, 
distal uh, phalange or this distal bone and try to move it up and down. And again, we're just trying to create accessory glide. I can feel how crunchy that joint feels, right? And you can see just even just after a few reps of that, how much better great toe extension that we can get, okay? So again, I'm going to follow this up with some in instrument work on the bottom of this foot. Same idea. Again, I'm not crushing them. I'm not trying. We're not breaking anything up. I'm just trying to bring some blood flow to the equation and create some tissue glide. How's that feel? Is that all right? First met head. And actually treating the heel itself. All right, so once we've done those few steps, I'm just gonna recheck and make sure that I've made a difference in his mobility. Uh, so we're gonna put these two back together. Antoine, go ahead and flex those up towards you as far as you can again. And you guys can see from this top view here that now at least these first met heads are back to even. So the next step for him over time is we're going to really have to improve his ankle dorsiflexion. So what I'm going to do now is start to address uh, or do some mobilizations of this, this talus. All right, so for this one, the first way I like to start again, I, I like to throw the towel over it, but just for grip. But I'm going to grab his calcaneus. I'm going to grab his midfoot. And I'll just do, do some gentle rear foot mobilizations with him. Just getting this calcaneus to move a little bit. And the way I like to set this up is to, again, if you have a high-low table, this works great. If you have a standard table, just if you're set hip height, is to brace his shin so that he's not just dumping into internal rotation of his femur. So I'm going to brace his shin here. Right, as I bring him into dorsiflexion and use that right hand to kind of thrust a little bit of a posterior glide of that talus, okay? So as I'm pulling him into dorsiflexion with my hip, I'm pressing down, also controlling this tibia, so I'm getting a nice clean translation of that talus. No pain with that, right? Feels good. All right, so as I'm pressing him into dorsiflexion, I'm giving him that extra push into traction, posterior glide, and I'm just oscillating here. So then once I get to the end here, I'm gonna press that in. I'm gonna say, hey, pull this up. Pull that ankle up towards you. Get him to pull that ankle into the position that I'm maintaining, and then relax. Good, we do that again. So I get you there, pull up, 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 up. Good, I'm gonna hold that for, you know, like five to 10 seconds or so. Again, just creating some context for this tissue to take up that range and relax last one okay one more time yeah. pull 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 beautiful all right and relax nice job all right so again retesting making sure that we're being effective pull is up to you and that looks like a beautiful thing how's that feel here now better Sweet, sweet. Uh, pop up, walk around. Good? Different? Yeah. Right, so that's, again, we're just creating an opportunity for more mobility here. I want him to feel the difference before we proceed. Uh, now we're gonna go work upstream, right? So we talked about quality hip extension, so go ahead and lay on your back, bud. We're gonna work on that hip now. All right, so we're gonna start with some uh, iliopsoas work or these deep hip flexors. Again, landmark-wise, look at ASIS and just kind of just medial to that is where you can kind of sink those fingers in. Um, so I'm gonna work him in just some pure uh, passive internal rotation here, where as I'm pinning and just, get, again, just getting these tissues to glide under my finger. Is that killing me? I mean, it doesn't tickle. I got my fingers like halfway into your stomach. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. I like duh. Right? So just, again, communication's key. He's going to put on the, the strong boy face for you, though. Oh, yes. Okay. Nice deep breaths. Nice deep breaths. Nice. 
know, it's pretty much an easy assumption to make. You got foot and ankle problems, you probably got some stuff going on upstream, right? So don't just assess the ankle because you can't look at a painting through a microscope, right? This is an athlete and he's going to accommodate or compensate you know when he has to right and that's the you know the best athletes are the best compensators are the best adapters so it's not uncommon to find some of this stuff upstream but again addressing it proactively or part of that overall plan for addressing his achilles issue is the same right so looking at that hip is also going to help take some of that pressure off you know if this mobility can mitigate some of that ground reaction force that's less force for his calf to have to take up the brunt of that. So again, addressing good quality hip mobility. Yeah, I can feel that. All right, so I'm just bringing them into some eye internal rotation and extension. All right, and then we can just start to work on some IR in, a, in an extension position. see he's nice and open here so just like we did with the Achilles or the, the ankle I'm just gonna give him some isometrics here at this end range position just to kind of create some context so Antoine I want you to pull this hip like as if you're gonna rotate the ankle towards midline just that's good just a little bit of pressure no pain with that right so we're gonna go 10 seconds or so and relax good all right, I'll just reassess where that end range feels and I'm gonna give it to him again. I'm pushing his foot and his femur together, right? So what I'm doing is approximating this knee joint so that as he pulls in, I'm not creating a ton of force or valgus on his knee. Go ahead, pull. Nice, dude. Pull, pull, pull. That boy, ramp it up a little bit. Good, no pain with that, right? And relax, good. Last one. Oh, nice. And then relax, good. All right, so I had him trying to pull in towards midline. Now we're gonna have him just maintain this position and resist me from pushing him towards midline. So hold here and just resist me pushing towards midline. So I'm giving him my chest and my arm to kind of support that femur. And I'm not pushing super hard. I'm probably giving him like 10 to 20% effort and relax. Go ahead and just move this around a little bit. You know, find another position. You can already see how much this hip's opened up. Go ahead and press. Good, out of boy. Pain with that? Mm -hmm. You feel like you're gonna cramp, do you? No. Good. And relax, good. And push. Uh, so we're going to take a little break. I'm going to work on the other side and we'll come back at you guys when we are ready for the taping and then the exercise portion. All right, so this last thing we're going to do is just finish with this with a rock tape application. Again, this is more to kind of have that slow drip of not only neurosensory input, but we want to tent that skin, get that lifting effect. So I like to just use a, a little spray bottle that has some rubbing alcohol in it. I'm going to clean the skin off real good. So we've got to clean this skin really good so that we know we're getting a nice, uh, good adhesion of the tape. All right, so I'm gonna measure this through his foot, through that Achilles, and maybe about like midway up his calf is where I'm gonna cut that. Cause I'm gonna add some stretch to this for him. Extra sticky tape you know, for your athletes is probably the way to go. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put him in a stretch position. We're gonna lay this tape right under his met heads. We wanna really make sure you get no wrinkles on this too. All right, so I'm gonna peel some of this backing off, throw a little bit of stretch on the bottom of his foot, and then also over the Achilles itself. All right, and then we'll just lay the rest of this down. Just like that. Smoothing that down, All right? So we don't want any wrinkles. Rub that down. 
try to leave this on a couple days, man. Obviously, you can play with it on. Um, then we're gonna just do some decompression. Right over this Achilles itself. So we're gonna split this in the middle. All right, we'll throw a little stretch on there. Lay it down, no stick on the ends here. I'm actually gonna double this one up. To just cover more surface area. All right, same thing here. So it's a nice kind of rock tape application for an Achilles tendon issue. Just make sure you put it on the right side. All right, cool. Awesome, man. All right, you can hop up. And now we're gonna get to the uh, exercise portion.